We are activating your unique self-discovery one show at a time. The Orchard of Wisdom Self-Discovery Podcast are at your fingertips, just waiting to inspire and invite you in discovering just how awesome you really are and how to navigate through life in joy, enrichment, personal abundance, in mind, body, spirit, heart and soul. All the people we bring you are here to serve you on your journey of life. Do enjoy our next show. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Their Story Matters right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today, well, it's the Hero Tribe Academy. And the names of the people that I'm going to be interviewing and sharing their wonderful story is Camilla, Sasha, and Joanna. What is the Hero Tribe? Well, it started with training camps in different locations in Europe and Asia, and they grew into a worldwide community that accompanies people on their journey to a greater life. The Hero Tribe, well, there's a hero in all of us, isn't it? But the origin of it is uh, the different backgrounds of Sasha, Camilla, and Joanna. Sasha is a long life martial arts researcher trained in temples, monasteries in Asia, and is the co founder of the Missing Link Martial Arts Community and the Secret Elements of Qigong system. Camilla came from a career in a five-star hotel industry before she decided to go her way and open up fitness and yoga studios in Vietnam. And Joanna is an unusual blend of scientist and shamanic practitioner and counsellor. We are going to have a wonderful, juicy conversation today. I can see that. I love this. You were all such beautiful, different instruments, but you decided to come together and make an orchestra. Welcome to the show, all of you. Thank, Thank you, you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Beautiful to be here. Now, we, we've, I love people have redirects in life. You know, we're on a journey. We think this is the journey that we're meant to be on. And then something kind of is either feeling lacking or something comes up in our lives that is, you know, this isn't working or it pivots us in another direction. I'm going to go around all of you here. I'm going to keep my glasses on for the show so I can actually see everybody. Um, <laughs> Uh, I want each one of you to tell us what was it that you know that point of pivot of this is the this is the tribe I want to be with and this is where we need to go. Camilla, I'll start with you first, love. Yeah, wonderful. Well, um, well, my kind of conscious hero's journey um, kind of started uh, while I was still in the five-star hotel industry, and um, I lived in Vietnam, in Hanoi, and worked there for for the hotel. And I worked six days a week, nine to sixteen hours, mm -hmm. and I really burned out. And I was questioning, I don't know, everything: my previous decisions, my life, my health, my purpose here on Earth, and and that's when kind of my journey kind of just started that I just typed it into Google, like, how can I be happy again? <laughs> like, it was just this kind of question. Yeah. And, and that started to open doors. And um, one door that was open there as well was that I um, yeah uh, was taken to a Qigong class where mm -hmm. I met Sasha and Joanna in Vietnam and got trained as a Qigong teacher by, by Sasha and Joanna and um, yeah, met them. And um, that was like starting as well my journey and, and finding ways on how can I, you know, be happy yeah. in life again and, and fulfill my purpose. And um, yeah, that's how I met my, my tribe family here and started a whole different chapter of my life. I love the way you put it out to the universe, you know, like just out there, you know, you know, Google, help me, where am I meant to go? And you paid attention, which is <laughs> the best thing about it. And Qigong, for people who don't know, it's rather like Tai Chi. Uh, it's very, very slow, deliberate movements and everything is about extension and, and letting your energy, your chi run through your body. A wonderful practice for anybody of any age. Sasha, let's go to you, the Qigong expert. <laughs> yeah, my my journey seems rather straightforward, I guess, for for most people who um, observe me and, and know me for for decades. Because I started martial arts when I was pretty young, and I knew I wanted to do something with it. There was this call to mysticism, and oh, yeah. um, when I was old enough, and my parents let me loose, I went to Asia and and studied um, Japanese history and language at university. And um, then I trained in monasteries and, and temples, but there was always this 
my 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 uh, thirst wasn't quenched in a way so um i think it was also this realization that um that there's a lot of talk about um yeah um enlightenment and and finding yourself in many practices but but rarely you you really yeah. get there because mm. people are too focused on the techniques in martial arts they are they want to hit people <laughs> and, <laughs> <Now> why? <laughs> and, and in, in, in yoga they want to do their asana and, yeah. and in qigong well people do the movement but there, there's something beyond that yes. and that was always what i was searching for and um yeah that that ultimately it, it brought me on a two-year exploration trip around the world where i was um researching lost traditions mm. and that was actually the trip when we all came together in vietnam and that kind of sprouted out into the hero tribe the ser serendipiousness of it isn't it wonderful i love it when it all comes together like that joanne Yes, thank you. And uh, I just have to say, it's always so beautiful to hear also you, Sasha and Camilla, share your story. It's always uh, also inspiring. <laughs> I love this very much. So, um, yes, yeah, so how how did the tribe start for me? So coming from um, like a depression when I was younger, trying to... Um, make something from that energy of pain and trying to make something from that you know devastation i've seen in the world with environmental destruction i wanted to use that energy and do something good and so i started studying environmental science studying landscape ecology and the more i studied the more <laughs> my brain muscle grew and i didn't become happier i just realized okay i know more stuff now but how do i change how do i facilitate transformation and when you look at environmental catastrophes or, you know, destruction that we as humans caused in that system that we're in right now, you always come to the conclusion, or I did at least, I need to look at the healing inside of humans. Yes. This is where the this is where the destruction, where the sickness is starting and the outside destruction is just a manifestation of how we treat ourselves. And so I am going also through my own diseases and, and symptoms of inner separation and illness. I then uh, really, yeah, started seeing more signs leading me on a shamanic journey mm -hmm. where I really um, found out more about what does it actually mean healing? What does it actually mean to unite or to, to communicate with different parts and the, in the universe? And so that <laughs> leads also to this uh, little summary that you have with me with the scientist and the shamanic mm -hmm. practitioner that um, I really was starting to build bridges, bridges from the mental world to the emotional, to the spiritual world. And um, so like really the, the peak of when did the tribe happen was not so far away. We started many, many years ago, but really um, this decision, okay, this is now the tribe is what really matters. Like there is, there is no solution in my sense of purpose in other fields of work as much as in the tribe, because here is where we can see direct effects, yes. direct change and transformation. And that's, uh, yeah, that's the magic of mm. what we represent today. And that is ever growing. You know, you use the word tribe. I often use the word orchestra. I say them, you know, we've all been gifted a beautiful instrument to learn to play. And we learn to play that instrument. And as a soloist, we can play it beautifully. But when we mm -hmm. decide to come together with an orchestra and each one in our own strengths, decide to come together in harmony, what we play together is transcending. So a lot mm -hmm. of what you're doing, each one of you with your own strengths, your own abilities, your own soul, heart, spirit journey, you've decided to build this tribe where you understand the strengths of each other, but then how people can bring that strength to the tribe in order to expand its harmony. Have I hit the nail on the head there or what? <laughs> <laughs> um, Sacha, I'm going to go back to you because you said about people wanting to learn martial arts just to hit people. And, you know, um, I've got a theory about the consciousness that's raising right now. We have more people that are disconnected, that are depressed, that are in anxiety, 
that are in flux uh, than ever before. And I believe it's because our consciousness is rising. And as it rises, we look at what we've been doing to each other. We look at how much pain we've been inflicting upon each other, how much pain and abuse that we're giving this planet. And in that conscious raising, it hurts. It hurts. Now, a lot of people don't want to raise that consciousness because they don't want this pain. But it's only through the pain that you can understand the healing. Now, a lot of Qigong and a lot of martial arts and a lot of shamanism, all of this philosophy is that to work through the pain, because in understanding the pain, you can understand not only the healing, but the purpose. So, Sasha, I'm going to throw that one over to you right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what, what you said, I, I totally ascribe to that. And I also think that that collectively we are going through this great purge at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things are yeah, bubbling up again from the depths of where we where we put it over decades and centuries and millennia. Yes. And um, it is time to kind of move through. There's only this this uh, we can only move through the um, what is it the the um, the eye of the needle mm -hmm. there's no way around it and that is um i think all these ancient methodologies offer great um yeah tools and and great support for that but only if we don't do them um superficially we need right. to use them really to their fullest extent and um yeah that is something that that i think it's where well, like you said there, there are so many people who are um, processing at the moment, mm -hmm. but also what I feel, there are more and more people waking up to this. And, and that's the beauty of, yes. of this time at the moment. And uh, for, for us, it's like this, this methodology or this, this um, basically this principle of the hero's journey is uh, what, what also brought the, the hero tribe together and kind of is a, one of the glues um, and it beautifully describes that. It's mm -hmm. um, the, the necessary part of every hero's journey is that we move into the cave of the dragon, that we mm -hmm. go to where our demons are actually waiting for us mm -hmm. and initially fight them, then hug them, then become one with them again, and then walk out of that cave with a new superpower. And yes, I think that is basically what we are also doing on a global scale at the moment. And it's super messy and it's uh, super frustrating, but it's also beautiful and necessary. There's a wonderful Celtic rune called Haglas and it's mm -hmm. disruption. And we are in that disruptive phase right now. But, you know, you you can't clean a house around the dirt. You've got to clean the dirt out, right? So that's what we're doing right now. There's a massive kind of cleansing, as you said, purge going on right now. Coming from the hotel industry, Camilla, uh, you know, it, it's so utterly organized. And, you know, it needs to be personable. Um, you're troubleshooting all the time. It's always about creating everybody else's harmony. Mm -hmm. You know, how much of that structure have you now brought into this tribe? Because we transfer all of our skills, you know, where, wherever we go, because that was the reason why you had to take that journey in the first place. So how have you felt that you've transferred some of those skills now into the tribe? Yeah, um, yeah, beautiful question, because uh, just recently I thought about that again, like, okay, why why did I walk this path in the hotel industry? It, as you mentioned, you know, just things happen for, for a reason. And so, so that was uh, also necessary. And and there is definitely like the the structure that I bring into the Hero Tribe because I kind of run mainly mm. also like the back offers and mm. Um, so there is definitely like a strength and and also in when it's kind of getting stressful, uh, I'm pretty well trained in that yes. <laughs> because in the hotel industry or restaurant, it's just full on and you are in front of the guests when when things happening. And so you always have to stay calm and concentrated. Um, but the other thing as well um, is my my skills in um, connecting with people listening to people to their needs and and also kind of complain handling that taught yeah. me so much um of of like i think we we always tend to like when someone is kind of in anger or is frustrated 
that um, usually I think people want to kind of say like, oh, um, I try to hide it. I don't want to face it. And what I really learned in the hotel industry is that if you have an angry guest, that is such a great opportunity. Like you go in and you talk with this person because there's always a matter lying underneath it. Oh, yeah. So when he's frustrated about, I don't know, his hotel room, I go in there and just find out, okay, what do you need now? What is your desire? What do you need now to be happy? And when you find this sweet spot on kind of turning around this mood, the status mm -hmm. of this person at that moment, you you win him forever. Like, so uh, I always found that those who complained were my best customers and were always returning. Mm -hmm. And, and that what I love as well in our work to, to have these people from all around the world, such huge difference in, in growing up in the environment and the background. And, and we, we have this pleasure to be there and kind of listen to them and find out, okay, okay, you're saying something, but what mm -hmm. is underneath there? What is what you really longing for in your heart and you from your soul and to guide them to see that and hear their voice again and, and follow that voice. Everything has a root cause. And mm -hmm. most of our reactions are surface. And if we take the time and somebody gives us the time to unravel and go in, we start seeing and understanding where that root cause is. And if you can heal the root cause, you've healed the problem. But we're so, as a Western society, always looking at band-aiding or taking care of the surface problem and not the root problem and i think one of the big things we don't give ourselves and we don't give each other is time 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 joanne you know um science and shamanism you know the one beautiful thing about interviewing scientists is the realization that those that are spiritual are not people that abstain from life. They are people that are truly immersed in life. Their senses are open. They are mm -hmm. ready to receive. They are ready to be open and willing to receive the wisdom. And people are beginning in the science world now to measure those that are living on the love plane, on the spiritual plane, and understand that they're actually frequenting at higher hertz. So, it's not such a far fetch from where you, you've been, you know, where you've been to where you are now. But what was your understanding as you trans uh, transitioned into shamanism? Can you specify the question? My understanding of what exactly? Uh, well, for you know, the kind of almost the science of shamanism. Mm. I think the most important thing when we look at both of these dimensions of perception of reality is that in both of them, there is curiosity. Mm -hmm. And that curiosity, I think, is the great shared common sense in both of these worlds. And both of them are probably scientists, or both yes. of them are shamans. <laughs> so yes. you can't yes. really, if you look at it from that way, <laughs> yeah. you can't really differentiate it. And um, what I found is that I struggled for a long time in the scientific world because my curiosity was bringing me to the boundaries of what the real, like the construct of reality was, um, well, told in university. So there was a paradigm that I was very curious to look beyond. Yes. <laughs> that was not so quite appreciated yeah. from all, like, at least not from all of the mm. um, teachers or professors. So um, that was what I struggled with most. And to be honest, the more I I explored in the world with trans and um, different varieties of experiencing reality, the more I came to understand it's all the same. Mm -hmm. Some people are just looking at a different layer, Yes, but it's all the same. So, um, and what I really wish for, like, if we look at these two cords or communities of, of understanding of life, because both of that brings us a lot of uh, gifts. If we wouldn't have rational scientists looking at matter, we wouldn't have found out in the rational way what quantum physics is. Yes. People knew, like thousands of thousands of years before, but they didn't name it that way. But in that way now, another part of our organism, the brain, the logic, the, the rational mind is also now able to understand more of that. What before was just 
a metaphor for the emotional landscape and sensation of mm. the, the body of feeling that field moving in that and we have that like description or the knowing of that field in i think in all of the different mystic cultures that uh, i have came across to read or you know talk with and uh, so that is something that i find most enjoyable that we're now first we had two different worlds or two layers and more and more like mycelium from the mushrooms it's more and more <laughs> coming to understand oh we're actually having quite a good team here which which can actually bring something maybe even completely new out of it right a new understanding you know when you look at a forest a tree doesn't look to another tree saying, well, I'm sorry, you know, you're not pretty enough to be in this forest or you're too different. You've got to go to that forest over there. The forest celebrates you whether you're down on the ground or up in the sky. And there's a wonderful documentary by Judy Dench uh, where they have actually, you know, cameraed the the fiber optics of the, the trees and how they immerse and talk with each other. Mm. That is us as a human race, but we've forgotten how to attach to that, mm. right? We've forgotten to be curious. We've we've limited our thinking because somebody has told us, well, this is the way it is. And we've, you know, we've forgotten that wonderment and that curiosity and that adventurism of, yes, but mm. what if, what if there is something, why do I feel this way? Why can't I explore this feeling and allow it to take me somewhere? And I have another genre called quantum spirituality for that reason. But it is the quantum science and the spirituality that are coming together that makes sense. And if we're willing to open our minds, hearts and souls, our spirits will fly, won't they, Sasha? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, absolutely, and and I love uh, how you you talked about this this curiosity and this this spark of um, excitement because yeah. this is actually also what we it's it's one of the the vehicles that we use because um, what initially excited us was this this notion of this extraordinary world the the mm. Euro's journey talks about this this place that is actually um, exciting again that place mm. where where connection is happening, where I can connect with everything uh, around me, where there's not this separation, like I'm a human that is a forest mm -hmm. and uh, I'm supposed to interact with it in a certain way. I can run and uh, yeah, use my bike in it. But well, in the extraordinary world, when, when I'm the hero embodying this archetype of the hero, I can do basically everything. Yes. And it's it's not about flying and rescuing maidens in despair. If you want to do that, <laughs> oh, fine. But it's more like ah, deep connection to the universe again and to other humans, and basically, of course, to to myself, to my core. Mm -hmm. What is actually like? What is really wanting to come out of me in this yeah. lifetime? And every iteration of the hero's journey is peeling the onion. Mm -hmm. And so we get closer and closer to this nothingness in the in the core, which brings out this pure being that is already inside of me. Yeah. And I would also describe it as this um, the, this constant uh, expansion of consciousness. And we are like on the outer edge of it, mm. supported by everything that happened before. And we are like uh, sprouting and blooming and blossoming if we allow it. In mm -hmm. a beautiful way and expand everything that is with our being that's what it's about this is what this next chapter is all about that raising up in that consciousness of being wondering and and uh, understanding that we are so much more than our matter we're so much more than the things around us and that you know we we are love we are truth we are peace we are the tree we are the ocean we are the wind, we are the land, that we, you know, our fiber optics may not physically show, but our vibration shows the, the intertwining with everything. And we've been living such a superficial life for so long. You know, as you said, when you had, um, when you had, you know, unhappy um, clients and you were willing to give them the time to find out really what the problem was. It wasn't the room, it wasn't the place, it was them in the place. And it's probably them taking a holiday, trying to escape themselves. 
only to actually have to come face to face with themselves. And there is no escaping that, is there? You cannot escape who you are, why you are, and what you're here to do. And when we are willing to peel back those onions and go to the very core of ourselves, that's when we truly begin to understand what our journey is all about. Camilla, what do you say to that? Yeah, definitely. You cannot escape it. And I, um, yeah, like just like a story from my own life. Like I, I, I came from a family where although it was never kind of meant by my parents, I did feel very conditioned and very kind of put into kind of boxes and that I have to, um, yeah, meet up on their expectations of, I don't know, becoming a woman and, and, and also having a career. And, and so I tried to escape, like going into the hotel industry was to, on one side, kind of please my father, because I, I thought, he feels this is an accepted career mm -hmm. and it gave me the chance to okay with the hotel industry I can you know deal with people that was always my from childhood on I was some kind of outgoing and and I can travel the world and and I felt so bonded to my family that kind of traveling the world gave me the permission to leave and then being, because I lived, um, I'm originally from, from Hamburg in Germany, and then I lived in London and the Netherlands, and then to Bora Bora in uh, French Polynesia, to Vietnam, and, and try to kind of escape these yeah. entanglements of my family. But you know what? I they came with me it was all yes. inside me so yes. <laughs> and i actually had to, to go back to to face these kind of demons that i carried inside myself so um yeah um you can run, but work. you can't hide, right? Resistance is yeah. futile. Somewhere along the line, you're going to have to face yourself. <laughs> and I think this is a lot what's happening with people right now. The beautiful thing of what I'm seeing with like what you guys are doing, the hero tribe, is that we realize our journey is up to us. Our discovery of who we are and what we're here for is our journey. What we do with that when we discover it is when we realize coming together as a community, as a tribe, we are so much stronger. As an orchestra, we are so much stronger and we have so much more impact. And as a human race, we're not meant to be solo, individual, in, in independence. We are meant to be people that are in a tribe. And that tribe or that village is only as strong as everyone's participation as everybody having each other's back, each other's heart and soul. So this we've been given this bill of goods for the last few decades that more is more and that uh, I don't need anybody. Um, you know, I can do this all myself. And we're realizing we're flapping in the wind, feeling lost and lonely and disconnected. And many people aren't even paying attention to the signs of their redirect because they're caught up in this tornado of external, external rather than internal. Sasha, what would you be, uh, what would you say to people that have, they've got to get to that point where I want to pivot, I want to change, or this is enough. You know, I've got to do something different. What would be your advice to somebody who's just made that choice and wanting to go in a new direction? Well, one thing that, that the people we work with, they, they often in that initial phase, they, they feel self-centered and they feel uh, shame around it. Because mm. as you said, um, our societal uh, imprinting tells us like, hey, you, you cannot do that. Well, you, you have to be self-sufficient, but at the same time, like fulfill your role. Don't be egotistical. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the initial stage of the hero's journey. We kind of have to seclude ourselves a little bit from the mm -hmm. outside world, from all these crazy factors <laughs> that <laughs> influenced <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah. And then we can come back resurrected as, as a better version and be of greater service again. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that was a little side excursion. So it is allowing ourselves actually to, mm -hmm. to be there for us is something yes. very important in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then a bit more pragmatical, this is something that, that we teach a lot. We always work from all angles. So in, mm -hmm. in the Hero Trap, we have, this is even our logo, we have uh, mind and body, our soul body um, 
Yeah, there. Thank you. Pull it back Joanna. a wee bit. Pull it back a little bit. There we go. That, so here the, is handbook of the center. The full, yeah. The full circle is the symbol for the soul, for yes. the, for also the mind. Then you have this is ancient Chinese thinking. Then you have the square, which symbolizes the earth or or the body, tangible things. And then we have the interrupted circle, which is connection, bringing mm. yin and yang together. Okay. And so we always teach like don't entirely seclude yourself and think about your problem or mm. how you want to evolve yourself also embody it your body yes. needs to it, it needs to arrive in the tissue i love this okay. i just called it up recently like the issue is in the tissue yes it is <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> we so store we, so much in there <laughs> absolutely <laughs> So, so we need to retrain not only our mind, but also our body and bring them in, in a beautiful new harmony. And then this is our connection aspect. We also need to apply it. We mm. need to go back into life, into society and like try to have a different conversation with our father, try to have a different conversation with our colleague. And then in, in uh, iteration number 10, maybe, yeah, something changed. Yeah. You know, the, if if uh, if you want to see change, you have to be the change. Um, I'm a knowingness coach, which is allowing the soul to speak to you. And a soul cannot speak to a closed heart. So the heart, even if it's cracked and broken and been trampled on many times, as many of us go through life in that way, um, it needs to be open and ready to receive. And when it is, the, the, the source, the divine, what anybody wishes to call it, that energy comes through, the wisdom. I call it. It resonates with the heart in truth. It goes to the spirit in action and the mind will know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. I've always been a person that if I think my knowledge, I'm going to think it wrong. If I feel my knowledge, I have more wisdom on how to use the knowledge rather than just being knowledge based. We've been taught that the chin up is so important, that the knowledge, the intellect, the, everything that you have in the head is so important. And we've forgotten about the heart, soul, and spirit and body's intellect. And when we combine all of it together and we truly listen in, then the cellular structure really has a chance to purge, to release. But we've got to be willing to go for all those emotions, right? Because... A lot of people, when they look at shamanism, you're still and at peace and you're full of wisdom, but they don't realize you had to go through the turmoil to get to that peace. Right, Joanne? Totally. And really, you know, Sarah, I believe it never really ends. No. <laughs> no, it never really ends. Like um, shamanism also for me is is a very beautiful terminology that encompasses the duality totally mm -hmm. in so many Being spiritual yang, right? directions <laughs> exactly the taiji the yin and yang in many spiritual practices i have you know with my curiosity dipped my toe in had a sniff <laughs> and looked around what's here <laughs> to find is there something uh, new to integrate i i often um I often was missing something and I didn't ever know why or what it really was until I, I learned to induce trance on myself just with sound, with the drum and just go into my inner world and let my body and let my brain, let my mind and heart cooperate and show me, let me experience what I need to really know. Only that is when I realized this is the wholeness that I was missing in other practices because it involves the physical feeling, it involves the fantasy, yes. the inspiration, the power of the creative thinking to give me solutions mm -hmm. that I could never come up with only here or here or with feeling my body. Right. So for me, that was this perfect match of, wow, this is how I can actually, you know, also cultivate or allow myself to have the strength to face that ugly, painful, deep, dark pit. Mm -hmm. And what you just said earlier, it resonates very much with me that we're only <laughs> given so much how we can handle at that time. Mm -hmm. And that is like many of the people that we work with as well, they come and say, oh, why is this happening again? I did work through it years yes. ago. Yes, yes. <laughs> I say, congratulations. <laughs> One layer of the onion is gone. And now you are allowed and you're capable to peel the second one. And this is something that we all 
experience ourselves, I guess, forever until at a certain point in a certain life, we, you know, we reach the core. And this is, yeah, this is the beautiful the transc- process of transcending. Yeah, the ascension. Mm, <laughs> yes. Of also like knowing. Mm. The further we come down, the more we arrive in the knowing, like mm. not the not the processing, but really the, the being of the, of the wisdom mm. that you mm. that you also mentioned. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Uh, the other thing about though is that it's not to be afraid of any of the little tornadoes that you're going to go through, because with each layer and each understanding and an each connection with self and the universe and, and the energy and the love, because everything, the love is the generator as far as I'm concerned, that is the generator of all. The more you are entwined with that is that every time a little crisis comes up, you are more equipped to deal Mm -hmm. with it so instead of it becoming a hurricane or a tornado that's going to be caused you know devastation in your life you you know rather like the steps of martial arts of qigong how to sidestep it or avoid it go over it you know just uh or deal with it go straight to the core Mm -hmm. of the hurricane right Mm -hmm. it's that we learn through the techniques of immersing ourselves in life of how to deal with things that doesn't mean things aren't still going to come Mm. It's just that they don't have such a crippling effect on us as they used to because we have become wiser and we know how to approach it because we've got the skills and the tools in our backpack. But I'm mm. going to go to Camille here on back to kind of the sense of management. For me, this year has just piled one, two, three, four, five, six things on top. And I've got to get all of these things done. And I'm a true colors coach, which is the key personality traits. And the trait of organization is somewhere in the next building. So it is something quite daunting for me. And it can immediately throw one into panic. And from, you know, from I have to go through the panic stage. Okay, have your panic. You know, have your, you know, feeling of overwhelm. And then I've learned what's the first step you need to take. Have you found when you're dealing with people that are feeling overwhelmed, You know, it's like, let's just bring it down to the first leap you're going to take is actually that first step. Have you been able to hone people in and let's manage this? Yeah, um, like that's actually also like something that in the Hero Tribe Academy, like what stands like at the beginning of every week is um, helping the people to or yeah, telling them to take their time to mm-hmm. really like what is the most important thing you can do and and also f- from there as a perspective on not just what kind of feels like on your to-do list as the the most pressing one but really the one that also guides you through this week through this month in in a state of 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 happiness of bliss of set like contentment and um and yeah, so like having someone who is like totally overwhelmed because there are so many things happening mm-hmm. and I can so well relate to that <laughs> <laughs> is to always call back into, again, just kind of breathing your breath, like because mm-hmm. you will notice as well when you are overwhelmed, your breath is short, fast, mm-hmm. you, you your whole body mm-hmm. kind of crunch in and, and then to have... You know, maybe a little trick is just to have some sort of reminder if it's like a bracelet or, or like a um, like a little note that you have somewhere to kind of breathe. And first of all, like kind of just close the eyes and relax and breathe and go into your body. And as you mentioned as well, like to allow this emotion of being overwhelmed and stressed to just float once through your body. Yeah. And then connecting again, okay, I'm safe. Like I'm in this present moment, I'm just safe. Nothing can happen to me. There is no real danger right now. There's maybe just pressing matters of answering emails, but I'm not (laughs) in a thread. And just deeply breathing. Okay, and what is really important, important is that I am okay. Yeah. And that I'm happy. And then, okay, let's see. And what is now the first thing I can do? And and there's only one thing that you can do at yeah, a time. Exactly. And then take the first step. And usually what then happens is people get into a flow as well. Oh, I do the first step and then I'm getting more into it. I think there's some sort of, is it 20 seconds, 60 seconds, something like that, that you just need to be into that topic. And then kind of everything kind of rolls 
Mm. Until you might have the next panic attack, and yeah. that's okay. <laughs> yes. Just look back on your post, uh, post it, and do it again. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and this is where the qigong comes really into it, and the whole martial arts meaning behind things. It is about the centering, isn't it? And you know, and when you are when you are anxious or uh, depressed or anything, we crunch everything up. And no energy, no chi, nothing can flow through us. And everything just is so daunting. There's no clarity coming up to your brain there because everything is clenched up. So, you know, the part of the breathing is to get the chakras and get the body in alignment so the energy and the chi can run through. The beauty of qigong is that it is a very slow and deliberate type of thing, isn't it? It's very much about the connection. Can you describe more your process with that? Me? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're the Qigong expert here. <laughs> <All right. yeah. laughs> no, they, they are all trained in Qigong now, so it's a little confusing, but yeah. The master. <laughs> You're the conductor. Yeah. <laughs> well, Qigong uh, is, is really a beautiful, beautiful core method, I would describe it. Um, it's something that in, in martial arts, for example, is, is used as... Um, as, as a core method, as a foundational method to train understanding the connection between brain and body. Mm -hmm. And from there, you're able to move into faster movements and specific movements. And nowadays, there are people using that with, with pro golfers, with pro um, athletes in all fields. Um, first, getting this basic understanding what actually happens in my body when I move. So... There, there is this kind of impulse starting from the brain being sent into the body, which is only really completely received when I understand this part of the body, which we call brain body mapping. So if I just have this vague map of my body, and, and some people don't even really know what is the, the lower part of their back, there is this, this dark cloud in their, in their inner brain body map. And that also means you cannot really move it. Mm -hmm. And that also means there is no attention on it. And that means there is no chi flowing right. through this part of the body, like, like you said, because um, chi flows where attention is. So there we, we kind of come full circle. If with qigong and this, the slowness in it, we can really deeply experience the body again, build this inner map understand this beautiful vehicle that we are that mm -hmm. we incarnated into and with that with this innate intelligence of the body and the chi everything is solved yeah stuff is healed again that that was painful and problematic for decades um we we are able to um change our internal emotional state because this is also something that entirely happens in the body. Of course, there's the brain component to it, but where do our emotions show in the body? Mm -hmm. So if I'm able, and that is something that with our Qigong system, we put a lot of emphasis on um, changing the state deliberately. So when I'm in, in a shadow water state, that would be being completely in fear, then I want to be able to, to switch states and decide like, okay, I'm not going to go fire directly. That's too much. But I would really love to be in earth, like mm -hmm. calm, centered, and just there observing. Okay, then I'm going to do that. And that is, is much easier when you have a vehicle like Qigong because it's a very slow process. And you, you kind of train the body to, hey, let's go to earth state again. Deliberate, right? We yes. we We... We do some things deliberately, but we don't understand why we're doing them. And the things that we need to do deliberately, we're avoiding, right? So, you know, it, it's when we ask people to center themselves, just pause, just take a breath. We're asking them to be present. Be present with your now, the gift of the now. What is the now telling you? And when your head gets out of the way and your heart and soul and body and everything is engaged, the wisdom that you're needing to know will come to you, that knowingness. But we we don't take that time to become present. You know, if, if there's that great posting of somebody doing a yoga pose, hurry up meditation, I haven't got all day, right? So we 
we got to understand that this entire process of leaving our chaotic life and learning to remanage it, learning to be connected from the inside out, not the outside in. It is a process. It is a journey. We need to listen. We need to learn, but we need to apply. It doesn't happen just by listening and, oh, that sounds good. If we don't apply it, it doesn't work, <laughs> right? We've got to apply it. Is this what the tribe stands for? Each one of you, your beautiful instruments in this orchestra, each having your own strength and your own forte, but helping people find their core, their center, their instrument, so they can learn to play it and then expand out the tribe even more. Is this what it's all about, Joanna? Yeah, oh, thank you. So you said it beautiful already, and I would, to the greatest um, or to, to the overall content agree, but I would I'd like to specify that like we truly believe everybody knows already. Yes, and we just, we're just in to... our own way. <laughs> yes, exactly. And and um, I I feel ourselves being as holders for space for people to explore in a safe way the different fractal arms or <laughs> patterns that they have neglected for so long and in that like we offer structure we offer attention we offer tools we offer a lot of affection as well and uh, like we do this from our heart and we can't avoid to show that as well so we offer all that like a beautiful space to explore the inner world and then i'm always like yeah really struck like you can see by me struggling finding words it really always touches me so much to see how these beautiful humans are really catching all of the wisdoms on their own like it sometimes feel like we give tiny impulses of like giving a certain information having a certain tool an exercise a movement a question it can be so little and then because they're willing because they already are on the verge of hey i am on my hero's journey right now and i really know where i want to go because we defined that structure before then all of a sudden this magic happens and we sometimes sit back and think how did that transformation come about like liberating <laughs> and it feels like we are the we having the honor to observe that beautiful process of their souls wanting to evolve yes hungry to evolve, understanding at the very core, we have to evolve. The very life of this planet is actually up to us. We have screwed it up, but we can resolve this issue. Mm -hmm. And it isn't pointing the finger, it's government, it's everybody else, there's three pointing back at you. You are part of the problem as well. Even if you think mm -hmm. you aren't, life practices, life thoughts, the way you treat yourself, the way you treat other people, what you're, you're, you're your driving forces on the exterior rather than the interior. You know, I do a great deal in many shows on business and the beauty of what I'm seeing in business in the, in the consciousness is if we do it from a place of love and invest in the people, invest in the planet resources, the profit will come. Exactly. And more and more people are understanding and people say, but what kind of people do you interview? You have so many different genres. I said, all those that come from love. When you come from the heart, you are already open, ready to receive. The soul is already there, ready to download. Your spirit is already ready to get into action. And all you need is that, that composite intellect on how do I apply this energy? How do I apply it? And then once you let set people loose, as you it, sit back and watch them discover. It's exciting. It's exciting to see this new birth of who yeah. they really are meant to be. And everything they've been before isn't a waste because it's the skills and the tools that they're going to bring into this new life. But it really is wonderful to see that. And there is no turning back, is there? Once you're mm -hmm. there, there is no turning back because you actually understand, you know, you mentioned it, Sasha, you know, the this human vessel. We are spiritual beings having a human existence. And when we can learn to use that beautiful spirit within us to drive this vehicle, then we can truly have the experience that we're meant to have here. And it's extraordinary. It's an extraordinary experience when you're willing to look at it and immerse yourself in it from that side <laughs> of the river rather than the bank that is 
disintegrating on the other side. You truly understand what's important in life. And the more people that immerse that, not only are their own lives going to be better, but in each one of them, they are now the equation that bring that embetterment and empowerment to others. Inspiration begets invitation. So when you inspire someone, you're inviting them to want to take the journey for themselves. And you're all doing that. Now, you've all been inspired by each other, by your own journeys, by creating this tribe now where you are all immersed in your own beautiful instruments, creating this harmony. And it's to set people free to create their own tribes or to expand your tribe. But it's to actually understand it doesn't matter where we are in the world. Who we are or what we're doing is what is our beautiful divine connection. How can we all open up to that soul, that heart and that spirit and come together? Because really that's what we've been invited to do, isn't it? So if people want to be a part of this tribe, um, you know, they're at that phase. You know, I just, it's not working for me anymore. I know I've got to change. Universe, where do I go? Camilla, how did they become a part of the tribe and what's the process? Yeah, um, so there are different ways on uh, being in contact with us. Um, Joanna already kind of hold into the camera for, for those who maybe watch us on YouTube or uh, <laughs> that we have the, the Hero's Handbook. Um, we published this book uh, two years ago. So um, that's a great start to, mm -hmm. to read um, about it. Um, um, and it's really about like claiming back the sovereignty of, of the being that we are. And yeah, coming back to the knowledge that you are the hero of your journey. And um, and then we uh, um, guide people through uh, um, like a mentoring programs um, that we have, the Hero Tribe Academy, where they are parts of uh, evolving with us in, in kind of also like one-on-one -on -one sessions where it goes really deep, where we guide the people to their demons and help them to kind of face them and, and uh, come out with new skills, new knowledge, um, as well as the community that we have in the Hero Tribe Academy uh, with weekly meetings. And another way as well to, to interact with us and get to know us is our tribe time. So we have every first Wednesday of the month, uh, we have the tribe time gathering. And it's a beautiful event uh, where you can join us. We do uh, something, we start always off to do something with the body, with like Qigong, um, an inspirational talk with exercises where you can reflect on your own journey and uh, uh, yeah, a very profound and powerful group meditation. So uh, that are the ways to interact with us. And of course, we are on Instagram and Facebook as well. So, so this is all done online or it's done in person? Are you all in different countries? Um. We so these are the parts that are happening online, but we have also our spirit of the hero camps. And uh, this year we have three, we will be in Brittany and France. Mm. Um, it's a week uh, long camp, and in the summer we always have our Italy camp that is two weeks long, and in October we are in Poland, which is also a week long. And and there, um, yeah, we have people having our offline event um, it's at places that are in nature where we do uh, connect with nature so we have like the ocean edition at mm. at the Atlantic Sea and then the mountains in, in Italy and also like the lakes of Poland and and there we go through the hero's journey and um, yeah experience a great transformation for all of the participants and always also for ourselves yes <laughs> so the regenerator, right? <laughs> Definitely. I mean, it is wonderful that we can do this virtually because we do reach more people. But it is so much nicer if we can actually come together physically. And, mm -hmm. you know, you know, um, the book is a wonderful idea for people who are truly interested in reading and learning. But as a true color coach, I know there are some people who are not, no, no, I'm go I don't want to read, I want to do. I want to get in there, I want to do. Or I want to observe first. You know, I want to come in a part of the group and observe how everybody's doing uh, or other people are like, well, okay, well, what's my next step? So each personality trait is going to receive in a different way. And you seem to have been able to give everybody whatever their entry level is, that invite to come in. So whether they just want to spectate, come into the group 
listen to the stories, uh, join in a little bit, whether they want to dive in, sign me up. I'm going to be there. Italy sounds fantastic, mm -hmm. right? You know, Brittany, woo, wonderful. Uh, I want to really immerse myself into the experience. So I really want to study more. So I want to read the book uh, or somebody who just wants to have a conversation with someone to have that connection, you know, like I need to actually speak with someone to feel that connection. And you seem to have been able to have it all there, which is wonderful. So it doesn't matter what level people are at. It's just, are you ready to take that next step? And that next step is a case of wonderment, curiosity, exploration, and the willingness to allow yourself to go down an unmapped path of your own soul, heart, and spirit in order to discover. And that's really exciting, isn't it? it is. Really exciting. Closing off, what would each one of you like to say to everybody, um, your own particular invitation? Sasha, I'll start with you. <laughs> well, in, in the... Uh in the atmosphere of what you just said, it's like um, apply this curiosity in, in your life. I think this is also, I, I also truly believe that like the, the base energy and what, what's holding everything together in the universe is love, is mm. attraction, is gravity in, in a mm. sense. But mm -hmm. what, what is a side quality of that is curiosity. Because yes. without curiosity and this willingness to expand and to uh, discover, there would be no love, there would be no attraction. Mm -hmm. And this is so dampened in in the last decades, in the yes. last centuries, from, from all the institutions that tell us, like, this is your status quo, stick to it. Outside is dangerous. Yeah. It's and just a form of control. <laughs> it's a form of control, absolutely. It's, it's uh, holding the whole consciousness of humanity mm. in its place. It's making it controllable, um, and it prevents what is actually at the core of our being is expansion and exploration. That's why we work with this, these, these playful ideas of the hero going out into uncharted territory, into forests with trolls and demons and dragons. And because that's <laughs> the language of our soul. And it excites me each time that we work with that. Uh, on a side note, before I go to the others, and one of the books that had such a profound effect on me was Northern Lights. So it's called The Golden Compass and the Westerns Thing by Philip Pullman. And it was the fact that the soul was an animal uh, up until puberty that changed every moment and spoke to you. And then once you hit puberty, it became the animal that represented you. And I thought, oh, God, I wish I had had my soul there to talk to me and I didn't have to go in and try to shut out all the noise and listen to it. It's there talking to me. But we can get there if we're willing to where we that voice of our soul is stronger than than our head or the chatter outside but it's uh yeah i totally agree with you be wondrous and don't let everybody else pull your strings joanna what would you like to say uh, it's uh, perfect that you asked me now because i just wanted to refer to what you just said anyway because you know, when you asked the question, what do you want to share now? And I thought about it. I was really glad that Sasha went first. So I had time to think about what do I actually want to share? The scientist in you has got to think about it first. <laughs> yes. and, then, and then this beautiful sentence came to me. When you're in doubt, ask yourself. Like, turn to your five-year-old self or whenever in time you felt like you were yourself <laughs> and felt it. Um, and then, you know, I envisioned this, like, Go into connection, go into communication with yourself and really dig into finding and hearing that voice. And then you came up with a <laughs> beautiful conversation with the soul as an animal. So um, I just underlined that. And um, another call out for everyone you out there listening to us is really connect also to others around you. Find the people that lift you up. Find those who are able to see that in you that you want to cultivate that attracts yourself into being yourself mm. people and find, the find these mm -hmm. yes find these medicine people and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and reach out you're not going to find it, you know, on the lower vibration. You've got to be willing to raise your own frequency so that you can start being in their perimeter Mm. And then the more and more you immerse yourself into it, the higher your frequency will go. And then there's no turning back. Camilla, what about you? Yeah, 
it's just amazing how this kind of uh, turned out because I um, I wanted to, or I had the impulse to say as well, like for those who are listening and who feel like really stuck and maybe depressed and unhappy and that, you know, find ways to lift yourself up again. Like as you talked about this frequency, uh, because like, like true change um, is also coming from, from lightness and and so you know i don't know listen to something that is funny that makes you laugh and and when kind of laughter is just coming out just allow it to be there even if you feel it's really inappropriate <laughs> i remember when my my mother died like i went from i don't know crying to suddenly laughing i don't even know where it came from but it just needed to be out there yes. and and it's it's kind of having fun and and taking this little spaces um, in in maybe in this period where a lot of things don't go right mm -hmm. um, to just light yourself up with laughter and some fun in however that might look like for you. Go and put yourself in an arena where you know it will lift you up. You know, music is for me. I have a almost two year old grandson with another one on the way. And if I want to lighten myself or I need a dose of love, all I need to do is be around him. And that wonderment of life that he is discovering, the simplicity and the joy. We have gobbledygook conversations where we're really very seriously in our gobbledygook talking to each other. And that just beautiful, honest, innocent love. An animal will give it to you. A child will give it to you. A senior that's been through life will give it to you. The wind and the trees and the ocean and the breeze will all give it to you. Just be open and ready and read, you know, listen to it. And as I said, music is a big one for me. So sometimes just put on some music that you know that's going to get your body going. Because when your body going, your spirit's going to lift up, your mind's going to clear, your heart wants to dance, and your soul feels relieved. So, you know, movement, whether it's the qigong, whether it's the music, whatever it is you have to do, please participate in your own life. Nothing's going to happen for you unless you make it happen to you. And that means that you've got to be willing to experience life, all of it, good, bad, and the ugly in order to understand what you're here for and the gift that you are. And then when you're willing to go through that beautiful journey of life, then you really are going to immerse yourself and become the hero that everybody knows you are. So it's www.hero-tribe.com. And the handbook is the hero's handbook. Doc, uh, no, handbook.com book. And of course, they're on the Facebook, the Hero Academy. Uh, and uh, the Hero Tribe on Instagram. Please reach out because we all want to be a part of a tribe. And it doesn't matter what level you're at, whether you have actually grown up into a certain higher level, maybe you could be a part of that tribe and part of being the healing for others. But the more that people come together in these good, good, good vibrations, the more we're going to lift each other and lift this planet up because Lord knows this is our only way. This is our only salvation right now. Raising our consciousness to the heart, to the higher spirit, then we actually will have the harmony that we're meant to have here. Thank you all for sharing so much. It's wonderful. And uh, keep on doing what you're doing. I love how you all came together and what you're doing around the world here. And yes, there's a hero inside of you and every single one of us. So it's just let it free. Thank you so much, folks. Until everyone out there, please participate in your own journey. Until next time, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. Find all of our shows on selfdiscoverymedia.com under podcasts or selfdiscoverymedia slash shows. And for all our current shows, go to What's New. We are supported by you, the audience. You will see a nice big shiny blue button for one-time donations or follow us on Patreon and you will be able to support us there. We enjoy bringing you such wisdom. And the next show will be up in just a moment.